Well guys, that one sucked. I just got home from the Jaguars game where they where they fell to the Saints by a score of 13 to 6. And far too often I have to do this. Far too often I make the two and a half hour drive out to Jacksonville, go to a game where it is just hotter than hell, and the Jaguars just don't play well. I mean, week one I go to this, the Chiefs game and the Jaguars didn't have a breath of life in that game. They were out of that one pretty early and they just got absolutely curb stomped. And this game, there was just nothing exciting about it. I mean, the Jaguars scored no touchdowns. The Jaguars had no big turnovers. All, all that really was to cheer about were sacks, you know, some third down stops, and a couple of Lambeau field goals. The Jaguars didn't put the ball in the end zone once, and it's just, it's just getting tiring, man. It's just, it's just, all this losing is just so damn frustrating, and really, there's not really, there's not any excuses right now. I mean, the defense played well. You got you got to give it to the defense, and I'll get into them later, but when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, nothing was clicking. Obviously, when you don't get in the end zone, it doesn't click. I mean, uh, the quarterback play wasn't all that great, you know, from Minshew. The wide receivers also weren't getting open downfield. Uh, they weren't catching some of the targets that they had, and the w worst of all, the offensive line is just so bad, and you can make some excuses about other parts. You could say, look, Minshew is a rookie. Um, he's kind of out playing his six-round pick stuff. This is really his first bad game. Uh, but it's a rookie, and they're going to go through their growing pains. You know, you can you can say whatever about, you know, the wide receivers. Maybe the ball wasn't getting to them. Maybe they didn't have enough time to run routes. But the offensive line, there's no excuse for these guys. I mean, you have at the interior offensive line two very high-paid players between Brandon Linder and Andrew Norwell. You know, those are guys that you pretty much handpicked. I mean, granted, you drafted Brandon Linder, but you were, you decided to extend him long term. And you made Andrew Noel the highest paid guard, and he just goes out there and averages a penalty per game. And then each of your each of your tackles, you know, you have two guys that you drafted at the top of the second round that, you know, that were top five in their respective drafts, and they're not playing up to speed. I mean, I guess you can kind of make an excuse for Juwan Taylor, if you want. I mean, he is a rookie. This is only a sixth game that he started. Um, he's going up against uh, Cameron Jordan, who's a very good defensive man. But at the end of the day, every NFL team has rookies starting on their offensive line. Pretty much every team does. At least 75% of the team does. So, you know, I'm tired. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm tired of making excuses for that part. This is an offensive line uh, that Dave Caldwell and Tom Coughlin have designed to fit whatever scheme they want to fit. This should be. You know, you have two guys that were potentially first-round picks drafted at the top of the second. Two guys very highly paid, and you have you know, you know, your swing right guard. You know, with with between Will Richardson and AJ Cannon there. But the offensive line is just atrocious. They they get no push. Like I'm sitting there, and you know, you look at Teddy Bridgewater. So oftentimes, I see Teddy Bridgewater just drop back, standing there, standing there, going through his reads, and just throwing and finding somebody open. I don't remember ever seeing Gardner Minshew actually be able to drop back and sit in the pocket for a while. It's just the, the offensive line is just absolutely horrible. And we have way too much invested in this offensive line for that to be the case. So that just really absolutely drives me nuts. And, you know, obviously, like I said, a quarterback play wasn't all that good. But, you know, very often times, and I, I feel like I'm a little bit of a quarterback apologist. You guys probably know this from past videos. But, you know, he's sitting there. And he gets pressured early, and he's kind of thrown off his back foot to, trying to get it out to receivers. Um, but one thing I am noticing about Minshew is that he, he looked like he was getting a little rattled this game. Um, it looked like, you know, they were kind of taking away the back shoulder fade, some of the intermediary stuff. And it seemed like he was kind of, he was holding the ball for a little bit too long, and he was rolling kind of, rolling out a little bit early. And, I mean, it just wasn't a solid game for Minshew, and I hope that he's not getting rattled. Uh, by all the stuff going on because that would definitely be detrimental to the team um, but you know I'm not really gonna uh, I'm not I'm not gonna get too much onto him it's just um, you know the receivers it's hard like there were some times where I was when I was at the game up in the nosebleeds you know I do like being up in the nosebleeds because you really get to see the whole entire play develop 
Um, but I was looking at the receivers, and they just weren't really getting open. Marcus Lattimore is a tremendous cornerback. I think he's extremely underrated. You know, you're always talking about the Xavier Rhodes, um, you know, the Jay and the Ramseys, and um, Patrick Petersons, all those guys being the top, you know, cornerbacks. You know, I think Marcus Lattimore definitely belongs in that discussion because he is an absolute beast. But really, a big thing with our team, it just seems like, it's like they're not playing as a cohesive unit overall. And what I mean is when the offense is playing good, the defense doesn't play good. When the defense is playing good, the offense isn't playing good. I mean, hell, look at these last two weeks. If if you had the Jag, the Jag today's Jaguars defense against the Carolina Panthers last week combined with the offense that was out there, we win that easy. Today, if you have last week's offense with today's defense, we're sitting here and we're 4-2, and two, but no. We dropped both those games, and now we're at two and freaking four. Two and four is what we're at. Two games back of first place in the AFC South, and you look at the upcoming stretch, man. Due to the Jaguars having finishing last in the AFC South in 2018, we get gifted with playing last place teams in their division. So next two weeks, we get the Bengals, who are currently 0-6, and, and we get the Jets, who are 1-5. Absolutely need to win those games. And then the following week, before the bye week, we have the Houston Texans in London. We have to go 3-0 and these next three games. 2-1 and isn't going to cut it. 3-0 and is what we have to do. You have to beat the Bengals and Jets because we're just better than them. And we have to beat the Houston Texans because they're first place in our division. You already lost one earlier this year. You have to beat them this time around and, and even that one up. And you just can't let them you know, sweep us again. Can't let them get another win. And that's uh, that's really the way you got to do it, man. You got to directly beat the AAC South teams in front of you. But it it, it sucks right now, man. This, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm staying optimistic. I mean, really, these next three weeks are going to be big. Um, but it just sucks. I mean, the Jaguars, you know, a big thing right now is like, of course, our demons play is good, but we're not getting any turnovers. And the Jaguars have only had turnovers in two games so far. Two games. In those two games when we have turnovers, we are 2-0. and In games without turnovers, we are 0-4. Need more explosive plays. And if Jalen Ramsey's going to be a bitch and sit out, then we got to play without him. And we got other guys that need to step up and, you know, play good defense and create the turnovers and... Um, you know, the defense, they, they were they ramped up the sacks a little bit, but far too often we're just not getting home uh, with four pass rushers. And it's it's odd to me because on paper, we have a great defensive line. On paper, we have Yannick Ngakwe, Josh Allen, Calais Campbell, Marcel Darius, you know, Avery Jones, you know, Dewan Smooth. Say what you want about Taven Bryan, uh, but he was a first-round pick, whatever, we have him. We're good on paper. Like, we're good on paper, this, this, this defensive line. I don't know what's going on out here. I I can't I can't figure out what's going on. Miles Jack I thought had another rough game. He's you know missing open field tackles, um, and it, it it it's just really rough, man. And 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 in three of our losses we lost by one possession, and a lot of it just comes down to the coaching. I think like in the Broncos game I I was almost comfortable when I think the score was tied. I forget, but at the beginning of the fourth quarter I was like, look. We can definitely still win this game. Uh, but at this game, I was like, it's 6-6. I don't think we're going to win this game. Because at the end of the day, it's, it really feels like it's going to be Doug Marone versus, versus Sean Payton. And Sean Payton is a better head coach than Doug Marone. I think Doug Marone is a decent head coach. But he's not a great head coach. He's not going to be... He's not going to take us to the next level. Which is unfortunate because I do like John D. Filippo as, a, as an offensive coordinator. Um, but you know, he might be one and done because we might have to get rid of Doug Marone just because he's so, um, just so mellow. And I like him as a person. And a lot of people are, I hear a lot of people saying, Oh, Doug Marone needs to show more fire on the sidelines. He needs to be doing this. It's like, look, if Doug Marone is starts to become fake, like the Jaguars are going to read right through that and it's not going to do anything good. Look, Doug Marone is not that kind of head coach to do that kind of stuff. I, we, we don't need him to show all this crazy fire and show all these, you know, have all these crazy, uh, you know, Odell Beckham like stuff where he's just going all over. No, it's it's how Doug Marone is, and uh, we're two and four right now. That's that sucks. That absolutely sucks. 
whatever. We, we wasted a chance to go 3-3. Three and three. And granted, last two weeks, we lost to good opponents. I mean, the Texans right now who are 4-2, and two, their two losses are to Carolina and New Orleans. You know, they're, uh, they lost to the same two teams that we did. And But the difference is that no matter what the Texans want to say, they have a better head coach than Doug Marone. Like, Bill O'Brien is actually a good head coach. So he's able to he's able to get up on these teams and capture victories. Doug Marone, I can't I can't say the same for. But um, th this one this one absolutely sucks. It stings. We're two and freaking four. There's no excuses. There's no excuses. We're not even all that injured. You know what I mean? We're not we're not even all that injured. Uh, whatever. But all right, guys. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts of the game down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is UCF Jaguar with Go Jags. I'm out.